Welcome to Crack It. In today's session, we'll be exploring an interesting and highly significant topic often featured in interviews, which is nothing but JWT or JSON Web Tokens. In this video, we will take an in-depth look of what JWT is, how JWT's make our application more secure and efficient. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up, share them with others and hit the subscribe button for instant updates. As we are well aware, data is of utmost importance and ensuring its secure transmission is essential to safeguard it from potential hackers. Suppose say I have two parties and those parties needs to securely transmit data. How is it? How, are they, how they want to securely transmit the data? That is by ensuring proper authentication and authorization. How can this be achieved? which specific thing or specific mechanism they can use to securely transmit their data. So it is through the utilization of JWTs. So what is a JWT? JSON Web Token is an open standard that defines a compact and self-contained way for securely transmitting information between the parties. So what is it? It is an open standard. So it is free. It is compact. It's like it will occupy only a less space and it is self-contained and it is a secure way of transmitting information between these two parties. So JSON Web Tokens had a significant impact on the way we handle data transmission, authentication and authorization in the modern web applications. Let's see how in this video. So before gaining the understanding of JWTs, it is essential for us to understand session tokens. Why session tokens were used previously and it had few limitations and to overcome this limitations, JWTs came in picture. So if we understand session tokens, it will be really easy for us to understand the JWTs. So let's try to understand this JWT, uh, sorry, session tokens with, through an example. So suppose I'm using internet. And I have some internet connectivity problem. So what will I do? I will call the customer assistance for support and I'll tell them that these are the issues that I'm facing with my internet. Can you please help with me? What will this customer representative do? This customer representative notes down all the issues that I have said and she is replying me back saying that the issue will get resolved in two hours and she is providing me an incident number or a case number. However, for me, what is happening is the issue is uh, persisting beyond the stipulated time, which is two hours for me, which she informed. So what will I do? I will call the help desk again. But will the same representative uh, uh, take my call? No, that is not the case. So will I explain all my problems to the uh, different representative that I told in my first call? No, I will not do that. I will just provide the incident number that I have got from the previous representative to the current representative. So what will they do? They'll just go search the incident number in their system and through that incident number, she will understand all the issues and she'll uh, provide me a suitable solution. So this is the session token, which is the session token. The incident number that she provides me is like a session token. So using the session tokens, there's no need for me to explain everything to a different representative. Also for this representative, it is very easy. Why? Because he has all the information already in handy. If he just go such as that incident number, he can understand what is what had happened. So this is like a session token. So session tokens are nothing but the encrypted strings. In our example, this incident number that she provided me to identify the session between the two parties. So the two parties here or myself and the customer representative or the entire organization to which the customer representative belongs and to identify between us. So for me to identify uh, the customer representative or the customer representative to identify what issue I had. Uh, case number is provided 
and that case number is like the session token so to identify each other to identify between these two parties we have something which is an encrypted string and that is nothing but a session token let's try to understand the drawback in this session token why are we not able to use this session tokens anymore how this jwts came into picture so let's now try to understand that drawback Suppose say I am logging into a web application of a bank. Suppose say there is a banking application which is web I am and I am using that. So while using that, that uh, banking web application provided me a session token. So I have with it. Suppose for some reason I have to move away from my laptop and I am logging that same banking application in my mobile. So mobile application of the uh, same banking app. So can I use the session token that has been generated by this web application to this banking application? The answer is no, it will not work. Why? Because the session tokens are restricted to only one server, meaning the token generated by one server cannot be utilized on the other server. However, JWTs offer the cross domain support, meaning in our example, the JWT token that is generated in the web application can be used in the mobile applications. So JWTs offers us cross domain support, allowing tokens to be shared across multiple servers or various domains or subdomains. This capability simplifies the implementation of single sign-on across multiple applications. So what JWT will do? This JWT token that is generated once can be used across multiple domains or the subdomains and which is which was lacking in these session tokens. Let's try to understand JOT with a real-time scenario. Suppose I need to go to a theme park. What will I do? So I'll be having a list of theme parks in which I need to select my preferred theme park and I need to choose a date. So for that, what will I do? I'll go to the booking portal. I'll select the preferred theme park. I'll select the date of my visit. I'll complete my payment. Then what will I get? I'll get a ticket. This ticket is like a JWT token. So what will this ticket of the theme park contain? So it will contain the date of the uh, ticket booking, list of free rides available with the ticket booking, name of the person who booked the ticket and few other information. So and this ticket that the booking portal issued will be valid only for that specific day. Suppose say I booked for Jan 22nd, it will be valid only for the Jan 22nd. When the day comes, it is enough if I show that ticket to the uh, theme park entrance. Why? Because that ticket will have all the information. They may just scan the QR code and they will let us in if the QR code is valid or the ticket is valid. That is enough. So please have this scenario in the in the mind of this ticket and let's now try to understand what JWT is. The JWT token operates the same way or the similar way that we described the theme park ticket scenario. So suppose I have a web application and I'm trying to log into the web application. What do I need to do? I need to provide my credentials to authenticate myself with the web application. So if suppose if my credentials are valid, what will happen? This web application will provide me an access token and that access token is nothing but the JWT token. So with this JWT token, if suppose I need to access a specific, a specific API. So what will I do? While accessing the API, I will add the JSON token that I have got from the web application to my header and my request is verified against this API to determine if the user has the necessary permissions. So let's let's come to that ticket scenario now. I have logged in, I have provided, I have authenticated myself, I got the ticket. So now the day has come and I'm going to the theme park. So I will provide my, I'll show my ticket to the theme park person. Likewise, that JWT token will head added to the header of the request what will happen that person in the uh, theme park will validate my ticket similarly my the api will validate my jwt token to verify it is valid or not there may be many uh, type of validations that and all we can cover in a separate video so it will validate whether the uh, jwt token is valid or not if the validation is successful what will happen this API will return me a 200 success response if suppose 
the jot token that i have entered is wrong or if it is tampered for some reason what will happen the api will give me an error response using jwt for api authorization is efficient why because the authentication will happen only once so i will log in to the web application i'll get a jwt token and i can use that jwt token for accessing uh, multiple apis it is not that jwt token is specific to an api so i can use the same jwt token of a web application to the multiple apis of the same web application so here the authentication is happening only once and the authorization can happen any number of times meaning a multiple apis can be accessed using a single a jwt token so also if the operation is completed let's say i have closed my web application what will happen to this json web token that is issued that will get expired so if i sign into my application once again a new access token will get generated and the jwt token already got generated will get expired and i cannot use that anymore as we now understand what jwts are we now need to know where we can use that jwt tokens so jwt tokens play a very important role in the microservices architecture and in the distributed systems so in the domain of the microservices numerous apis need to communicate with each other seamlessly how is it possible that is possible with the help of the jwt tokens jwt tokens made those communications really easy and implementing the authentication or the role based authorization is really easy it's it's close to effortless when we use jwts so this jwt uses a private public key signing method so what is it this jwt token uses the private key for signing the jwt token and the public key for validating the jwt token if suppose the token is tampered yes we'll come to know why because it is signed using the private key and when i validate it using a public key that is not matching so i can identify that my jwt token is tampered and i'll not use that jwt token for my further api calls so this method enhances security making it challenging for the unauthorized tampering as i said earlier when we come into authentication authentication is a resource intensive process s yes. and that is happening only once when we use jwt how as we uh, discussed in the previous slide authentication will happen only once in the web application and the same jwt token can be used in the multiple places or in the multiple apis so the resource intensive process authentication is happening only once and the same jwt token is can be used across the multiple services which is reducing the burden on the system the burden on these apis on authenticating each and every time and it is very easy to scale the entire application why because a, sim a single jwt token can be used across the multiple apis or the multiple instances of the apis so scalability becomes very easy after jwt comes into existence but with session tokens it's not the case we cannot scale our application why because this the token generated by one server cannot be used by the other server but when jot jwt comes into picture scalability of the entire system becomes very easy why because authentication is happening only once and this jwt token can be used in the multiple instances of the same apis or in the different apis of the same web application now try to understand how the jwt token looks like so the jwt token basically consists of three parts one is header that is concatenated with the payload using a dot and the signature and that's concatenated using a dot so basically the jwt token has three parts header payload and the signature and these three are concatenated using the dots so in what format the jwt token will be it will be in a string format so the first is the header the header typically consists of two parts 
one is the type of the token which is nothing but the jwt token yes we are seeing the syntax or how the jwt token looks like and the second is the algorithm what is the signing algorithm that we are going to use so next is the payload what is this payload how payloads will mainly contain the claims what are the claims claims are nothing but the statements about the user or an entity and few other additional information if we want to send anything so mainly the payload consists of the claims and additional data and in the claims again we have three types of claims one is registered claims public claims and private claims so we have few common registered claims and those are nothing but ISS which is nothing but the issuer who issued the JWT token what is the subject of the JWT token to whom the JWT token is intended to that is this AUD which is nothing but the audience and exp is the expiration when this jwt token will get expired so these are few of the registered claims and the private claims private claims are nothing but the custom claims also known as the custom claims that are created to share information between parties that agree on using them only those two parties will know like why they are using that specific claim in the jwt token so those are called as the uh, private claims also it is very important to note that we should not have any sensitive data in the jwt token why because we can decode jwt token very easily using the jwt.io so if we it is very very important to note that we should not share any sensitive information in the jwt token this signature part is created using the encoded header, the encoded payload and the secret. The signature is a, now a combination of the encoded header, payload, secret along with the algorithm that we specified in the header. If supposed, also this signature acts as a seal of authenticity and integrity. Why? Because if someone, let's assume if someone attempts to tamper my token during the transmission, this signature will no longer match when the recipient tries to verify it so we can identify that the jot has been mismatched and we will come to know that the jot has been compromised rendering it invalid and unfit for further use so this signature is a crucial aspect of jwt's which ensures data integrity and guards against unauthorized modifications this mechanism plays a important role in maintaining the security and trustworthiness of jwt's within various applications and the systems so the signature is a very very important part that's maintaining the security and trustworthiness of jwt's we can create our jwt tokens using this jwt.io suppose say uh, this is the sample that has been generated by jwt.io. I want to change suppose this name to crack it. You can see that the corresponding string in this color which is nothing but the base 64 URL encoded of payload is getting changed. If I change anything in the payload the corresponding value will get changed. So I have my JWT token here. So if suppose let's assume this token is tampered in the middle and uh, i'm getting some other token what will happen if it is tampered we will get to know using this invalid signature why because my signature is a combination of header payload and the secret if anything is getting changed in the payload or in the header we can easily identify that uh, uh, tampered jwt token while validating the signature so it's very easy to identify as we conclude this video we have gained a comprehensive understanding of jwt its significance in microservices architecture and its efficiency we have also delved into the visual representation of jwt Stay tuned for the upcoming content as we will be creating a video on JWT implementation using Spring Security. Your support means a lot. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching and see you next time.